In this video I want to try an app for mind mapping as well as for networked and visual note taking. The app is called Scrintle and Scrintle is very kindly sponsoring this video. Thanks for that, but it won't keep me from being critical in my review. If you want to try Scrintle for yourself, you will find a discount code in the description below. As an example, I will process some literature or media notes. So if you, regardless of the app, are interested in things like note-taking, personal knowledge management or the Zettelkasten method, sit up straight and listen carefully, you might learn something here. Let's go. Infinite space. That has always been something that made me a little uneasy. For example, the crazy fact that our Earth is floating around in the universe. Or how you can be out at sea so far that there is no shore in sight. Best not think about that. At a smaller scale, even the infinite canvas in an app like OneNote kind of overwhelms me and has always been a reason for me not to use this probably most popular of all note-taking apps. I am convinced that creativity needs boundaries or some frame. And so does my note-taking space. At least that's what I thought until recently. Maybe I think today I'm just getting old. Because the idea of a digital whiteboards and infinite space for mind mapping and visual note-taking is gaining new momentum these days. Obsidian, the knowledge base app of my choice, just recently got such a feature called Canvas. But if anyone would ask me for a recommendation for a digital mind mapping and visual note-taking tool, I wouldn't recommend Obsidian right away because of its much broader scope and its steep learning curve. Instead, an app that is more focused on the visual aspect of note-taking is Scrintle, which claims to be as if Myro and Obsidian had a baby. Well, just because I enjoy spending time with my friends doesn't mean I like their kids, but sure, let's give it a try. Scrintle is both an app for mind mapping and visualizing your notes in creative ways and for networked note-taking. So it works as a tool for visual note-taking as well as for personal knowledge management. I want to try again at a visual note-taking in infinite space by processing, as I said, some literature or media notes or reading notes as you could call them as well to see if the visual aspect has some advantages over my usual approach based on plain text. Processing notes from your readings is an important step in building your own Zettelkasten. I made separate videos about knowledge base basics and the Zettelkasten method in the digital age. They are linked below. Now let's go into it. When I first open Scrintle, I wind up on my desk. My desk is like a homepage where I can arrange all kinds of notes and just put them away at the end of the day to start all fresh and tidy the next morning. Just like my real desk. A nice idea but I want to set up a board right away. In Scrintle, there are basically only three entities to sort your stuff. Cards, boards and tags. So just as in Rome research, there are no folders. That settles the whole folders versus tags debate. Boards are the places where you can visually arrange your writings and thinking. I want to make reading notes on a book I just read, The Old Man and the Sea, because when you're looking for new ideas, you should turn to old books or as the saying goes. I could create a board and name it after the book, or as I know I want to make reading notes, I can use one of the templates called reading notes board. That sounds about right. Working with templates is always advisable to leverage the potential of digital efficiency, especially when you are building a digital setter custom. Likewise, when learning a new piece of software, I would always recommend to get familiar with all the hotkeys as soon as possible or at least with the most important ones. In Scrintle, as in any relevant note-taking app nowadays, you can of course use hotkeys. Here they are called shortcuts. You can find them right at the top of the settings. Unfortunately, I haven't found a shortcut to open the shortcuts yet. Not that important because as of today, you can't customize the shortcuts anyway, just as you can't create your own template so far. These are features that should definitely be on the roadmap. But back to work. In the template I can change the board's name and then open up the first card. Cards are where your notes live and all kinds of other media you want to add, like images, videos, tweets. I insert the name of the reading source and a brief summary of my reading. I could also add the source if I had the book as PDF, for example. 
Now I can fill out the ideas as separate cards uh, which are linked to my source card. You can create such links within the editor by simply typing plus and the card's name or even more simply by drawing an arrow. If you draw such an arrow in the empty space, it automatically creates a new card. You can also create a new card using the shortcut C. Here I want to place an old short film that a German student once created, based on The Old Man and the Sea, combined with the song Sail by Evo Nation. Just a nice little work of art that I want to remember. Once I placed the link to this video in a card, another place where I can find this is the web links sections in the left sidebar. Here I can search through all the links within my notes. Next I would insert the key takeaways from this reading. For The Old Man and the Sea some important themes are the relationship between man and nature or between master and apprentice or the intertwined nature of triumph and defeat or the dignity of the human spirit. Lastly I can connect each idea to relevant passages from the work as textual evidence. The whole point of a Zettelkasten-like note-taking method is precisely to store all these notes not in a single document, but as separate Zettel or cards. Because now I can also connect these cards to other cards and arrange them in another board in a completely new way. And for this, I have to admit, the visual note-taking in infinite space is a pretty appropriate and compelling approach. It helps me to organize my thoughts more clearly and to recognize trains of thought as such. However, my thoughts, notes and writings are my most important assets as a knowledge worker. As in my video on Rome research, I have to point out here that I'm not really comfortable with these assets being somewhere in a cloud instead of locally on my hard drive. If that's not a deal breaker for you, then of course you can also do things like daily journaling in Scrintle. There are quite a few more features that I haven't even touched on here, such as real-time collaboration and sharing notes via public URL, which is possible in Scrintle, as well as importing markdown archives, for example, from Notion or Obsidian. To try and use the app yourself, you can find a discount code in the description below. Have fun, thanks for your attention and I'll catch you on the flip side. Bye!